Oh, let me get my bearings, okay? Because I'm not very versed in late night talk shows. So I know that there's James Corden. Mm-hmm. He does, what's his show? The Late Late Show. The Late Late Show. That's convenient. Um, Jimmy Fallon does a Jimmy Fallon show, right? It's The Tonight Show. The Tonight it's- it's a night show wow these are very creative with these names about late night talk oh, yeah. shows yeah and then uh stephen colbert is yeah colbert is the late show the late- which is directly before the late late show there's also late night which is after the, the tonight show there's uh it's like a timeline oh yeah yeah there's there's a the tonight show there's a late night there's the late show on cbs there's the late late show on cbs you've got conan just ended his tbs talk show which is named conan james corden is probably my favorite Okay. He honestly just like has that factor of like, oh, let's be funny, and it's actually funny. It's not like forced comedy. Yeah. Jimmy Fallon's also pretty good. He he, wrote, I saw at Target he wrote these books called um, Mama and Dada. I think like little baby okay. books are so cute. Okay, anyway, it's off topic. I, I also forgot that John Oliver does last week tonight. There's the Daily Show with Trevor Noah. Oh my gosh, Trevor Noah. He's also one of my favorite. He's so funny. Yeah. He's, he's really I need good. comedy. I need comedy. I don't want straight mm-hmm. just like talk, 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 talk. I need comedy. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think it's it, specifically the Daily Show is interesting because uh, before it was hosted by Trevor Noah, it was hosted by John Stewart, who is just a comedian. And then it had a spinoff show called The Cobero Report, hosted by the host, the, the current host of The Late Show. But it wasn't him. It was him playing a character. So the whole thing, even though it looked like a late night talk show, it was basically just a comedy program because it was on Comedy Central. I feel like you could do like a whole like universe timeline, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> well, and especially with all the hosts they've had, because none of these shows that are currently on, uh, they've all had a previous host. You had Craig Ferguson host the Late Late Show. You've had uh, Jay Leno and a bunch of hosts of the Tonight Show. You had uh, Dave Letterman with uh, the Late Show and Late Night. But Jimmy Fallon had Late Night before he had the Tonight Show. There's just so many, so many things. My brain is still confused on late, 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 late. Yeah. night. I don't know. Basically, just put the word late somewhere in there and maybe a show or a night or something. Yeah. yeah and just... then you got yourself uh, a show name. Yeah. Yeah. It's... Maybe we should try that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's off book late time show. Bingo. <laughs> yeah. Late night shows can be at their best a really entertaining show. That helps to give you some of the news of the day, helps to kind of keep you informed on what's going on in the entertainment world with the celebrity interviews and stuff, and can be entertaining with various remotes or sketches or like James Corden has the, the carpool karaoke and crosswalk the musical like we were talking about last oh week. Oh my gosh. No, but, I actually just watched one. Sorry, off topic a little bit. I actually just watched one because I was researching about certain stuff and I was watching the one with, um, it was like Lynn and then like three other like Broadway people. Oh and yeah. I was like... This is fun. I was like, I feel like this would be fun just being in a car full of people and just doing tons of karaoke and talking oh, yeah. to James Corden. Yeah. Oh, and, and, and Kimmel has uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live on ABC. There are just so many of them. I keep forgetting about them. <laughs> my brain my brain is just like not wrapping around any of these names. So I'm just like, uh, but that the whole, so they have like each there, they like have their own thing, if you've noticed. Mm-hmm. So like James Corden does more of like, Broadway entertainment, like singing stuff. Pretending he's beside me. Jimmy Fallon does more celebrities or like the entertainment. Yeah, it's kind of party game things that he does. Yeah, you can either lie about this or you can tell the truth. It's up to you. This is a small diorama. Chris Pratt, you lie! Sucker! <laughs> I think Trevor Noah deals with more like politics and like yeah. real world issues, but turns it into comedy. I think that press conference was the single most embarrassing performance by an American president on the world stage that I've ever seen. The most embarrassing performance by an American president. Do you know how hard it is? to achieve that. George H.W. Bush once threw up on the Japanese prime minister. (laughs) And Trump is now on top. Stephen Colbert was kind of comedic, but also like news. Yeah. To go cocktails and alcohol delivery ends today. 
You see, you see New York? <laughs> the people want their booze. <laughs> He, he also does these, uh, you know, musical numbers, or he'll often do these sketches with whatever celebrity he has. True. Yeah. It's, there's a whole wide variety. Which is nice. And I've noticed, like, the younger that the host, not, like, the younger the host gets, but, like, the more relevant, the more, like, straying away from, like, older topics. Mm-hmm. So, like, now they're doing more, like, entertainment and Broadway and things that are interesting to the other, younger audience instead of, like, news and politics. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, and I, I think there is, there's a line with the the news and stuff because I think a good amount of it is nice because a lot of people don't have time to do a bunch of research. So getting your news from a show that also gives you other things is nice. But also, I think if you give too much, it just becomes annoying because it's not like you're going to get a full, you know, news report in a comedy show anyway. So maybe don't try to make the entire show news when you're not going to give good news anyway. Exactly. And like right now, the world's kind of just not a very nice place. And so like you need that comedic relief. Right. Like with Jimmy Fallon and James Corden and stuff, instead of just watching someone being like, this is what happened today. Yeah. The world sucks. Have a great night. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Basically. Basically. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting when you compare something like The Tonight Show to Conan's show on TBS because Conan hosted The Tonight Show. I think when you compare the current Tonight Show to Conan's recently ended uh, Conan show, I think you can see the difference between a cable show like Conan and a, a network show like The Tonight Show and the kind of rules they have and the, how much Conan is able to break the format and do more remote stuff and do more of just kind of whatever he wants as compared to something like The Tonight Show, which does do some of those things, but definitely seems more corralled into the more cliché format of celebrity interviews and monologues and doesn't have as much room to move i was watching something on youtube and it led me to you know how when you like watch something on youtube and it just like leads you down a rabbit hole oh yeah and you just keep going video after video so i ended up on uh the tonight show with jimmy Fallon or whatever jimmy fallon show is um (laughs) on the youtube and it was a video of the Hamilton cast doing Helpless with the Roots, which is like the band that he has oh, yeah. on his show with like household instruments. And I was like, see this, this is relevant. This is like yeah. entertainment. Yeah. I, I do think that with The Tonight Show, since coming back into the studio after the quarantine, it seems like NBC is letting him do some more stuff because he did the Broadway's back number with Limon Miranda and a bunch of other Broadway stars. He did uh, 2020 The Musical with and- Andrew Reynolds. He's done a lot of other things since he got back that seem more like he's just having fun and trying things. And I think that he really does well there. And I think that when you compare that to his pre-COVID shows, it seems a little bit more cliche than where he, he looks like he's given more room to experiment now. A lot of shows have the issue of they seem too produced and they seem like they're trying to fit themselves into the same uh, format they were in in the 50s. Uh, there was a, a film theory episode about the quarantine versions of late night shows. And uh, they actually compared the original Tonight Show opening to the current one, and it is nearly identical. This is that 1954 broadcast. From New York City, the National Broadcasting Company presents Tonight, starring Steve Allen. And this is from this year. From 30 Rockefeller Plaza here in New York City, it's the Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon. And I think that if that isn't indicative of their problems, I think nothing is. But I think that when they can break out of that and do more things, they can show more emotion. They can seem more genuine and like they're trying to put together a good show. And granted, they're doing this a lot, so it's not going to be perfect every day. But I think that when they're trying, at least, it shows and the quality goes up exponentially. Honestly, like you were saying, the celebrity is kind of becoming a cliche a little bit Mm -hmm. of like the general like, oh, they're starring in a new movie. Let's get them on television. Right. Like... That's so cliche nowadays. Like, I know you want, like, um, hype for the movie or for the show that they're going to be on. But at the same time, it's like, we know it's coming out. It's all over social media. It's mm-hmm. all over. Like, do something new. Don't put them on a talk show. Right. I think that talk shows started as a, a variety show. And somehow along the way, they kind of turned into this very by the book. We're sitting behind a desk. We're interviewing people. We have a monologue. You could, like, drag and drop your very own talk show and just pick a celebrity, pick a movie, 
and then pick a guy to put behind a desk. And I think that if we want to keep things relevant and interesting, I think we kind of almost need to go back to that variety show format where it's not that you can't have celebrities to be interviewed, but like, don't just do that. Have celebrities, have them on. We we'll also do, you know, do more things like the, the carpool karaoke, do remote stuff, do musical numbers, exactly. do whatever, whatever the host wants to do, whatever that team is good at, but experiment, do things that are going to get people to watch and enjoy themselves and enjoy making it. So it's not just a by the numbers. Uh, what happened in the news? Okay, who's making a movie? Okay, we have a show. Exactly. And like, that's what James Corden is doing is I, that's why he's so popular to me because he's going away from those cliches, but still mm-hmm. staying relevant by doing the carpool karaoke with, um, like they did One Direction at one point. I don't know if they were broken up then or not, but yeah, that's true. Um, so they did that to bring like relevance back to them. They've done uh, the Hamilton car sing along. They've done Adele. Right. They've done, um, You've done a bunch. They've done so many people, and like they'll do it around the time of an album coming out or something, mm-hmm. or one of their movies, or like the pro shot is coming out. And so I'm like, that's what you need to do, not just have them sit and answer questions. Like, right. I want to see someone parachute out of an airplane and answer questions. Like, that's where I needed to go. Not sure what the audio quality would be like for that, but you know. They could make it work. Hey, it's 2021. So I heard you have a new movie coming out. What was your favorite part of filming? Exactly. I want them parachuting and answering questions. They could have like a list of the questions ready to go and damn, there it is. That's your that's your show. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I think not to talk too much about Conan, but I think it's interesting because he uh a couple years ago at this point, I think, he shortened his hour long show to half an hour. And he went from this very stereotypical desk with the skyline behind him and guest chairs next to him to a format that he sat in a chair and there was another chair opposite him and he was at a coffee table. That it felt a lot more like he was just in the living room than he was at a late night talk show set. And I think that that's very, he, he lost a house band and I think that he was trying to kind of break out of that stereotypical format and try a more laid back casual setting that fit his personality more. And then he canceled the show like a year later. And I don't know if that, those two things were related but I do think it's interesting that when you do something that drastic, because there aren't many shows that don't have that desk, that that's that same format. And so I think it's interesting that very shortly after he changed it, and shortened it, he left the show. I wonder if it's like people want that consistency yeah. and they want that year old stereotype of sitting behind a desk and answering questions. But my question is, is this going to stay relevant 10 years later when we right. have kids or like our friends have kids and we're watching and babysitting and we're watching TV with them and a late night talk show comes on. Are they going to sit and watch it? Are we going to sit and watch it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think that it's, it's telling that uh, things like the desk and the monologue have lasted as long as they have. And I think that the things that exist still are generic enough that I think you can plug your personality and your style into it but at the same time why do we have a desk I have nothing wrong with the desk but I think we need to ask why we have the things we do and decide intentionally if we want to keep them and why people like them like what is it about a desk that makes it worth having or is it just because it looks cool I I don't really know what it is about that setup that is so popular I don't mind it but I don't really know why we have it and so I think we need to ask why we are doing the things that we're doing to decide if we want to keep doing them or if we want to change what we're doing. A lot of these shows know that they have celebrities, whether it's in the interview or they're talking about celebrities in the monologue, they have that celebrity factor. And so I think that some of them use that as a, as a crutch because they know that people are going to watch. They know that they have those in their show. And so they don't need to do a bunch of other stuff in order to get people to watch. But I think that that can only last so long. And people are very uh, fickle when it comes to what they want to watch. So I think that you almost need to take the celebrities out of the equation and say, if this weren't a celebrity, is it still interesting? Would people watch a random extra from Avengers Endgame talk about it? Or is it only because it's Chris Pratt? Would people watch other people sing in a car? Or is it only because it's Broadway stars? And I think that if you can make something that is interesting and then have celebrities do that, I think that you have something good. But I think if it's only because they're celebrities that it's interesting, I think you missed the mark there. Exactly. James Corden did a performance. It was 22 musicals in 12 minutes with Emily Blunt and Lynn. 
but it was to promote the Mary Poppins musical or Mary Mm. Poppins Returns movie, I guess. And it was like, wow, I want to watch that because first off, it's musicals. Second off, it's comedy. And third, it's promoting something, but it's not just constantly talking about it. Right. Like, yeah, Mary Poppins was like a small segment of like the 20 or the 12 minutes. But it was still like they were doing other stuff than just shoving the movie in your face. Right. Yeah. I I think the Wendy shows find a way to innovate and do things that are entertaining and do promote things because that's fine. But I think that when they can find a way to take that format that everyone likes and use it in a new way and in a way that makes the audiences that are watching enjoy it, I think that when they're taking chances and doing new things and not not just copying what everyone else is doing, I think that's when you really start to see the shows that people like and I think are going to stay relevant as opposed to the ones that just decide to keep doing what everyone's been doing for a bunch of years. The idea of it's a host talking to celebrities and doing things, it's, it's something that is generic enough that I think you can continue it for a while. You just have to change exactly what you're doing within that format. Exactly. But I guess we'll have to see because, like, it's nothing's predictable at this point. Nothing. Yeah. Like, with talk shows, nothing. Nope. <laughs> Basically. Basically. 